What's up, everybody? Welcome. Subscriber analysis stream today. I've got a few additions. Mr. Cuffy, how did your quad go? Did you play in the quad last week? I haven't... I have not... Alright. I have not seen result. One and a half out of three. Alright. <clears throat> Mid-quad. Mid-quad performance. Alright. Just popped in my head. Now that I saw you online. Guys, we have some submissions for subscriber stream today. Sparkle Horse is my handle here on leechess.org. We are analyzing our subscriber stream January 12th, 2023. I've got um, a submission from Move 11, which is the game Gelfand Adams. Um, Sparkle Horse versus Thomas Strengthson. Submitted by Thomas Strengthson. Resonance Spectator. Resonance Spectator, I guess, submitted that game from Husky uh, against Husky. Miro, what's up? I've got a couple other games I want to add here. Um, Mule Skinner. Mule Skinner is Mule Skinner. You can never trust him to give you a game you can put in. We'll just have to make a note. <laughs> Mule Skinner. His games are always in like in a separate study. And welcome everybody to the stream. Don't forget to donate, support the stream. Not the greatest result. Being number one seed. Number one seed. T bot poo. Saeeds. Saeed says, I would really be grateful if you could analyze the game in the following link. Alright. I'll have to grab the PGN. Where is PGN? Uh, copy PGN? Can we do it that way? And then paste? Very good with copy paste. Add a new chapter. Paste. And there it is. There it is. Alright. Chapter 5. And then finally, Tpubot. If you're looking for some games today, how's about you versus me in the last simul? All right, TP bot. TP bot, where's the game? How do I put it in there? Where's my? Ah. I don't want to do that. I just want to add the game, dude. Get PGN. Get PGN. I got PGN. Copy PGN would be a better command. Copy PGN. Tools. Pass study. Chapter, paste, all right, create chapter. All right, so that's TP bot. I'm not going to the quads in Philly. It's on Broad Street. There's a lot of graffiti in the area. Dude. <clears throat> Let's not talk about getting our car stolen in Philadelphia. All right. Yeah. I would suggest another option, Mr. Coffee. I don't know if it's doable. What you should do is drive to a safe, like, SEPTA. Um, not SEPTA, but essentially you could go to, like, a park and ride. You know what I mean? Like, you park your car outside of Philly in some kind of train station and take the take the train in. Like, when I was in South Jersey, we would park in Haddonfield or somewhere where it's safe and then take the train into Philly. It's like 15 minutes by train. I'm just saying, if you really want to play in something in Philly, you could probably do something like that where you're able to park 
outside outside the city itself. Um, or you could pay for a parking garage. All right, but it's it's a long trip from Harrisburg to play in a quad, man. I don't know. I think that's um, that's for me the main thing. Yeah, it's a long trip, dude. I don't know. If you don't want to do that, I I can can understand. Saeed's. Yeah, we just added your game. Saeed's. You're number five, I believe. Number five. You have to take what I can get. All right. Yeah. No, I mean you could definitely. If you really want to play. You could definitely park outside the city in a safe suburb and take a short train ride ride in. You know, that way, if you get mugged or something, it's just your money. You know, they don't get your car. All right, guys. Um, yeah, I think crime in Philly has been up lately. All right, we've got Gelfand Adams' first game. I feel like we're missing something. Hold on a second. Astro Bates' game. We have Asturbate, if it pleases Master. This is this is our Asturbate. All right, analysis board. Add game. Put it in its proper place. So Asturbate should be probably like third in the list. Who else did I forget? We can do up to 10 games on subscriber stream nights. Still got a few places left. Please support the stream by donating, subscribing. Don't forget. Astrobeat, I was listening to music on, on a other window and vaguely heard my name. You heard your name. A song about Gina. All right, we're gonna start with a Grandmaster game here, Gelfan Adams. Um, tomorrow we have rapid challenges in the morning. Friday, eleven a.m., eleven thirty a.m. CET, eleven thirty, and Sunday simul, six thirty p.m. Hey, it's Miro. Game. May I send another game in case? There was still room? No. <laughs> now everybody gets just one game. It doesn't work like that. All right, analysis. Analysis board. You have a maximum of one game. Subscriber stream. Hey, it's my row. All right, that's eight. All right, guys, Thursday, just have my coffee. I'm awake. Um, we're going to do game one. Gelfand, Miles, Gelfand, Miles. Miles Adams, no, Gelfand, Adams, Michael. Boris Gelfand, Adams, Michael. This is from Unknown. Who cares? T Boot Poo. Ah. Now we understand. T boot poo. The secret is revealed. I thought it was just something that got, you know, dog poo on your shoe or something. It was like boot poo. So I didn't know what a T boot, a T boot is. But now I understand. Um, D4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight f3, d5, g3, Catalania. Oh yeah, we can have another, we can have another hot philosophical debate about freedom of speech today. Tipu bot. Yeah, I like that. That, alright, anyway, we're on chess now. Um, 
This is Move 11 submission. He plays the black side of the Catalan. So I suppose this game is something he might have looked at from black's perspective. Let's flip the board. We're looking at this game for Move 11, and from his perspective, he's playing black. Check. Almost universal here to play bishop d2. It's possible to play the other moves. All right. So bishop b7 is pretty popular. Um, let's see, I've never looked at c5. Wonder what happens if you play c5. And bishop takes d2 is actually playable. Um, I think when you play the black side of, side of Catalan as a high level player, it's important to know whether we're playing for a draw or we're trying to, to play for a win. a5 is, is definitely a fairly known variation. But I was curious if this is a thing. I had never really thought about it before. Karpov, LeBron. Could be reached by a BOGO move order. Check, bishop d2. c5. g3. D5. LeBron played the bogo a lot. He played it against me. Um, this is interesting. Almost no games in this variation. Anyway, just off, off the top of my head, it was original idea. So a5, bishop g2. We can also play queen c2, just guarding the pawn at c4. Quasi, Quasimodo. LeBron James. LeBron James likes to play c5 in that position. Okay, so queen c2 is an important idea because taking here doesn't temporarily win a pawn. Well, it would very temporarily win a pawn. Okay, bishop g2, castles. And so... Again, you know, this is an important variation. Takes on c4, move 11. Castles. And again, queen c2. Very normal line. But now we see this bizarre move, queen c1. It's all upside. That's a weird move. That is a weird move. Why would white prefer to have the queen on c1 to c2? Daniel Dubov has played this move last year. Moksudlu played it last year. Oh, so this is a hot... It's a hot variation. This is a relatively modern game. This is Gelfen Adams 2021. I assumed it was like some old game. Okay, so this is all new. It looks like a stupid move on the surface. It's hard to imagine like the queen is more useful at c1 than on c2. But it has to be something to do with it has to be something to do with the queen being like less exposed there, I was I would assume. I mean you're still going to grab the pawn, right? If d takes c4. If d c4 we're still playing queen takes c4. So what's the point, really? No, I seriously, let's look at queen c2. Black has mainline c5. Knight c6 is possible. I was wondering if the queen could get attacked. Gelfand is awesome. Everything is awesome. Honestly, I mean, if you ask me to figure this out, I am not figure. I have not figured it out. I mean, 
there's another possibility. Mr. Spock. The other possibility is that the move doesn't have any independent significance. It just was randomly played in in a whole lot of games. Can anybody come up with an idea? Why why is this move played? Why is Queen C one better than Queen C two? I cannot come up with anything. No. This this subscriber stream is for subscribers. Sadly. Um when I host my next troll subscriber stream, I'll be the first one to let you know. Um I'm just thinking, how is that queen going to get attacked? It's weird. I mean, that's a lot of games to have in the database that are very recent. Of course, Vidit, Shankland. Somebody's copying, you know, someone else. Yeah, I, I can't even begin to guess what it is. I don't understand. Is it something on this diagonal? Are we exchanging bishops on b4 and then bringing the queen out to like e3 or f4 in some weird way? The the most logical explanation is the computer likes it for some reason. So let's let's turn on the engine here. See, queen c1 is among the top two moves. So it's just like people being weird, you know. It's it's Daniel Dubov or somebody like Shanklin just trying to be weird. Playing the second best move rather than the best move in this position. Because all their moves... Yeah, I mean, it's not unusual to play queen c1 at some point. Usually, like, after capturing on c4, you can drop back to... Drop back to c1. Yeah, the likelihood of something like knight a3, knight c2 is very remote. Um, it's just Shankland or whoever played it first being weird. Very hard to see a benefit in queen c1. Um, the only thing I can think of is like taking on b4 and the queen popping out on that diagonal. We'll see what happens here. Now we're following Dubov, Shanklin. Okay, well, Shanklin was black. All right. So Dubov. Dubov has a lot of creative ideas, you know. So it's very possible, but I think most likely it's just a computer-generated move. Nothing special to it. And it looks like um, Adams lost this game. Shanklin drew. Oh, so this game was actually first. Okay. This game was actually first. This game was played in December of 2021. So Gelfin introduced it. Not not Dubov. And everyone just copied. Yeah, but it doesn't seem to have any independent significance. Um, so what should Black do here? C6 or Bishop B7. This is interesting. Shanklin just voluntarily retreated his bash bishop. His bishop. He retreated his bishop back to e7, leaving the queen stranded on c1. That's certainly an interesting idea. Here in one game, white played bishop f4. This is Moksudlu with white, c6. 
Rook D1. Again, very difficult to derive the benefit of having your queen on C1 here. Anyway, that's my theoretical take. But bishop takes B4. See, here we have some element of possible possible purpose in this type of line that that speaks in favor of you know Shanklin's idea bringing the bishop back punishing that queen by keeping it bottled up by the bishop on d2 it makes sense I think maybe Shanklin's idea makes sense castle c6 takes takes and now Guffin I was wondering about, well, obviously like that, but it looks sort of stupid. Queen d2 looks stupid. The pawn's too easy to protect. So he just goes here. And b6 makes sense. Now here, knight e5, d5, knight d7. And all of a sudden, so take take here. B six is B six possibly. Is there an alternative to B six? A five. No, can black play another move here? Absolutely. But this bishop is really buried on c8. That's why he played b6. How about this position? Maybe, maybe Adams was hasty here. Seriously, maybe Adams shouldn't rush this exchange of knights on e5. Can we just can we just play like simply bishop b7? Take take knight c6. You could trade for that crappy knight. For the crappy bishop, I mean. This pawn looks very weak here. Yeah, I don't know. This this looks like this looks serious. The more I look at this, the more I feel like, you know, Shanklin did the right thing. But it raises another question, you know, what about like taking right away? Why why does white need to wait? I guess C six is a bad move. This pawn is an issue on the file. Yeah, there's a lot of interesting questions. I think that Black's play can be improved. Um, but I think it's starting to look problematic already. From what I see. Black already has a difficult position here. Again, we'll see what happens. Maybe it's not that bad. You know, maybe I'm panicking. I'm panicking unnecessarily. This isn't so dangerous. So he just simply goes here, defending the pawn. The truth is that maybe black was okay. Maybe black is okay here. Not that big a deal. Bishop b7, queen e3. Yeah. I think the truth is that black is just okay. White is a tiny bit better, but it doesn't seem almost relevant. Yeah, it's a, it's it's absolutely minuscule, white's advantage. So it's just not a lot of meaning to this novelty. I think. I'm not sure about queen e7. He wants to keep this pawn protected. 
Black has a lot of choices. You could also play queen b8, for example. If you keep pressure on e5, the knight can't move. What's white going to do? Attack the pawn here. But it's not that clear, man. We have a lot of moves here. We could play bishop a6. Rook c8. Even b3, you know, is a conceivable move. But he wanted to keep the pawn protected on on there. Now knight d4. See, that's a problem. That knight is awfully strong. Rook c8. f4. Alright. I don't like that. You know, why are we letting white unravel like that? So let's try queen b8. Slaggy. It's number one move. Oh, no, rook a5 first. With the idea of... So I think Gelfin went downhill. I mean, Adams went downhill here with queen e7. It's, they're, they're getting old. They're like 50, man. These guys are over 50. They're getting old. And they're just playing like routine moves. Queen e7 is too routine. And now white really has a clamp on the position with f4. That's nice. Bam. f5. Wow. I don't know what the time control was here. Gelfen sacked. He sacked a pawn. Sack a ponda. And another pawn. Not not a sacrifice. Quite an aggressive sequence by Gelfan. And now G takes F5. So all the black's pawns are all over the place. And he goes for the ending. Take, 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 take. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. For those of you from the Sesame, Sesame Street, um, Sesame Sesame Street. Um, yeah, I don't think this was like a particularly well played game. Looks like a lot of mistakes from both sides, but especially by Black. Just got, he got tortured. Of course. Rook f7 check. King g8. Knight b3. Was the computer line. Clear. Outside pawn up, protected by the bishop at, at g2. Black has c3. Black is threatening c3. Wow, bishop f1. Damn, that just like wins on the spot. Bishop f1, c3 isn't a thing. But does it win on the spot? No, we need to analyze further. Rook e1, if rook takes c4, bishop a6. For example, rook f4, rook a1. A3, Rook B1, B4, Rook A1, something like this, take, 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 and then like Rook B1 winning. It's real close.
So rook takes c4, rook rook takes b2. Bishop's hanging. He was banking on this. Wow. Holy shit. So he lost this ending. Wait, it's a rook pawn. It's the wrong rook pawn. Bleep and bleep. How does white win with the wrong rook pawn? So I can sack... Sack my bishop for the pawn on b2, and it's a draw. Unless white can magically make me, like, go here and, and let you become a g-pawn. This looks like a good move, g5. It's one of the first moves I would consider. The engine says king f6 is best. I mean, Gelfan, you know, he probably didn't like this. But I guess there you could just go g5. If h5... No, it's definitely an h-pawn. Wow. I mean, g5 can't be can't be a big di difference, though. He let the white king get really strong. He could have... I don't think it would have mattered. King e6. King e5. You want that bishop to have the longest possible diagonal. You want to be able to sack the bishop on two different diagonals. Wow. So he played king f4. King f4 unnecessarily. So bishop e8 or bishop d7. And it's a draw. If you go bishop d7, you go bishop b5, I go bishop f5 or something. Wow, that's not a, that's not a draw. That's crazy. Black has only one drawing move in this position. I thought like bishop f5, bishop g4 would both work. Unbelievable. Why does bishop f5 lose? Bishop c6, bishop d3. This is unbelievable. Bishop d5, bishop e2, so bishop c4, bishop f3, and so forth, and so on. b5 with a winning position. Not easy. How about if I go to e8, and you play bishop b5? Now only bishop h5 draws. Wow. So what's the lesson to be learned with this? You always want to keep your bishop at maximum bishop distance. Bishop e8. Bishop e5. Bishop h5. Let's say h3. Yeah, g4 is a draw. Yeah, so Adams makes a, a really crazy mistake here. King f4 unnecessarily, like, moving his king away from the center, it doesn't make any sense. And suddenly he's just lost. Just queens. That was really childlike. Childlike, you know, loss. He, he could have lost in a way more complex way. Like, I could have forgiven him if he did that. You know, if he went bishop d7... Um, bishop b5, bishop f5, bishop c6 here, bishop d5 and went on to lose. I think he could be he could be forgiven, but to like walk his king over to the other side and just childlike lose here. That's pretty sad. All right. Adams has lost a little bit more off his fastball than Gelfand perhaps. But the opening um no big deal. Although Shanklin's idea of 
Bishop e7 deserves some consideration there. Not trading the dark square bishops, move 11. If we go back to that game, um, not trading the dark square bishops has its logic. I'm in the wrong study. What the hell is this? What is this? What? Why are there like four Hey It's Miro games? I think Hey It's Miro like took over my computer or something. Added his own game four times. How did it, how did that happen? Did I do that? I don't know how I did that. I don't understand how that happened. That's weird. How's my internet? Good? Alright, guys. Don't forget to subscribe and donate. We need your support. The second game for today. Thomas Trainson. I've got Saeed's and TP bot in spot six and seven. Mr. Coffee, did you submit a game? I don't know if he's still here. All right, Thomas Trainson is black against me from last week's simul. G3, bishop b7, bishop g2, bishop e7, castle, castle, knight c3, and now you played you played d6, which I think is just passive. Um, I don't know if, if Thomas is here. I didn't see him in this in the chat. There, there are three good moves here at least. I'm a, I'm an admin admin, no admin. My password is admin. Um, that's how they got four Miro games in the stream there. Seriously, guys, don't forget to subscribe and donate. Um, all right, we've got... You can also check out our Discord channel, our YouTube. Yeah, d6 is a mistake. So you're supposed to play 94 trading pieces, d5, establishing, you know, what is effectively a kind of Catalan, or knight a6, the Karpov, hyper-modern, which I, I think is interesting as well. Um, other moves just not very good. D6 is passive, but I you know I don't know like what the best refutation of of D6 is. You see here, there's some people who played Queen C2. I mean, if if you play Queen C2, there's a chance that Black can play C5 now and turn it into a kind of Benoni. So my feeling is that like it's better to just go d5 directly. Now if, if he tries to do something funky like that, black structure looks kind of sus. I think Mr. Coffee went back to work. Yeah, I don't like the way he played this. This is this is not good. So e5. Vladislav no Vyacheslav Ikonikov. It's a cool name. I always thought it was a cool name, but I think he's Bulgarian. I always love the name Vyacheslav. It sounds like Biacheslav. But um Now I played knight d2, which doesn't have a lot of following. Yeah, I'm a little rusty on my white side of the, the d6, Queen's Indian. Um, e4 makes sense, just occupying the square. I remember a game a friend of mine lost like 25 years ago against Jonathan Schroer, where he was black in a structure like this, and Schroer just 
crushed him with his central pawns with like f4. I don't think Jonathan ever did did e4. He just like played f4. But I'm sure that Schroer Schroer probably did like knight e1 basically. And it wasn't the same position, but it was something similar. Where I think he just played f4, never even bothered to play e4 with a very strong uh, space advantage for white. This is probably superior. I wasn't thinking clearly. I played knight d2, but it, it interferes with my bishop a bit. So this is probably not quite as good. It's also not clear like where the knight's going. From e1, you can go to d3, and and that will help, like support f4 attack, attacking the, the pawn on e5. I feel like white's better coordinated, so I definitely made a mistake here with knight d2. He plays knight on bd7, and now I played. Hesitantly, it's a simul. Um, you know, I was aware that. There are some cases where this bishop might come to g5 and try to exchange itself off. So I was kind of like hesitating to play e4 too early. So I played this waiting move, but it slightly weakens white's king side. And now a5. Just grabbing space over there. White is better on the king side. I can also play like a3, b3, rook b1, b4. Slowly taking over. Um... That's why I played rook b1. Now he plays knight c5. And here, I wanted to play b3. Like I said, b3, a3, b4. Not really sure why I didn't just continue. I don't really know why I didn't just continue with my plan. Feels most logical just to play b3. Instead, I took my time to play queen c2. Not a bad move. Adding to control of e4. So, what you know, black doesn't have a lot of counterplay here. I, I guess I would consider... What he did, you know... Also, other, other moves, you know, that allow f5 to be played. Knight e8 keeps these... Keeps the base of the pawn chain guarded. And as I said, there are some cases where, like, the check Benoni type of thing might might be viable. But in general, I like white. White has a lot more space. This move was provocative. You know, I was really... I was tempted to do some weird stuff after that. I was tempted to do e3. But if I play e3, I mean, he's going to play f5. I think I actually looked at crazy-ass moves like g4 with white. And then was I was just thinking to myself, this is insane. You know, I mean, you're really weakening your king side. I don't know if you want to do that. I mean, I would possibly gain control of e4. But at what price? White has total control of e4, but at what price? Like, really weakening my king side. It might be worth it, though. It's interesting. I, I, I still like white better here. So knight h5. I didn't know what to do, though. Probably this. As in the game. Um, a little bit later. What I did here doesn't make tons of sense. I mean, I basically just traded pieces for his strong knight on c5. I could do the same thing with knight b3. But... Ultimately, trading pieces, I think, only helps black. I, I basically suffered because my knight was on d2. It never should have been on that square in the first place. And now this, f5, knight c5, bc5, and black black is okay. I mean, black, black has clamped down here. You have f5. Um, it's hard for me to play f4. You're going to come back with bishop c8 like in the game. I thought it was okay. Although you do have to watch this diagonal. I don't know about his timing of this move. Bishop c8 seems like a good idea.
But it's possible that Wade has something. Maybe getting this rook off the diagonal. If you play this, this pawn looks kind of lonely. If you play this, the rook is out of play. If you, you know, maybe you should just concretely play f4. You would completely give up the e4 square in that in that case. Let's say bishop here. Here you still have knight f6. Or take, take. Actually, that doesn't work because I have takes here. I have to complete my development first. Something like bishop d2. Is c6 bad? This is exposed to... This is nuclear radiation, Bob. Is nuclear radiation bad? Bad for you or good for you? If you're the Incredible Hulk, it might be okay. But yeah, this this is this is really bad. If if it wasn't there, you know, I think C six would be an anti positional move that's sometimes useful. It's a way of chipping against the center. Um, in some cases, it might not be a bad move. Yeah. So he does this. I'm just a little bit afraid of that diagonal opening up. Probably not going to happen. Um, I played f4. But I mean, what I'm saying is, like, let's imagine now Thomas Strengthson wasn't really paying attention and he decided to play king h8, you know, like the ultimate waiting move. Now, you know, obviously take, take, d6, and you got what, you know, what I described as nuclear radiation, taking out your rook on a8 or your bishop on e7. So that's clearly important. Black has to deal with this f4. And Tomas could take. Maybe this is the thing to do. You take here. Wait has to recapture. And now this pawn is this pawn is slightly backward. I mean in retrospect, I expected him to do something like this. I mean, can I take with the bishop? Yeah. But it's a concession. Black has like lots of moves here. G five, knight takes bishop. I don't like it. Here Rook f3, let's say here, and then if I can't play e4, and I'm just like backwardized here, well maybe I have to ignore this bishop g3 thing and just play e4 now. Let's see what the evaluation is. Nah, it's not good. It loses. Wow. So I'm in serious trouble, dudes. I was in serious trouble. I didn't even realize how much serious trouble I was in here. So F4 is actually a blunder. I didn't go over the game with the engine afterwards. Um, the simul, so... White's... White's... Got nothing. I mean, if e4, I, I'm not liking this. And if f4 is bad, I have nothing to do. I have no play. So I got really lucky here. Wow, this is really bad. Pawn takes pawn. But I was very relieved when he played e4. This looks like a good thing, but it's not. Once he played e4, his his foundation falls apart. And and this is a, a classic King's Indian break, g4. Now, so long as there's not some kind of violent attack with with the h4, I'm I'm just kicking him kicking him out. So takes I sacrifice that pawn to take out that pawn. And the central pawn is more important. Now black is is better. 
Let's see the evaluation now. I said now black is better. I, I was supposed to be... Now white is better. It's still not better. Wow. I can't believe it. I thought this was fully sound. The computer doesn't doesn't trust me. Bishop takes e4. I thought I was good here. Wow. Well, I guess he had knight f6. But I didn't think I was in any immediate danger. I mean, my center is is very has very strong potential. Maybe this is a mistake. G3 check. I mean, he could take here at the at the danger of of exposing his own king. This is I didn't think it was this bad for me though. You know, we're all always like results oriented. I won the game so my position must have been good. It wasn't good enough. Knight f6 is what I expected. And I don't really want to give him my white bishop. So what choice do I have here? Bishop d3. And if pawn takes pawn, I try to to roll the center. Yeah, my king is not that great. But does black has something or not? You know, check here. He's just, he's he's got to seriously worry about what to do. It's not that easy for black here. Um. So I thought e4 was a mistake. What does the computer say? It was a mistake because he should have played e takes f4. But this is also a mistake. So I'm playing g4 too early. I should have prepared it with like rook g1. g4, ft, g4, bishop to c4, and then g3, check, king g2. And now I'm threatening bishop takes h7, so he has to play knight f6. Why didn't he play knight f6? We don't know. Well, he should play knight f6. Bishop h4. That piece ended up not really doing anything. And of course he violently loses his h7 pawn with check, which jeopardizes the safety of his own king. I mean, it's just not necessary. Obviously here is possible too. And although there I might, I might be able to do f5. He valued, what? He valued his b6 pawn. I like your, your dyslexia. He valued that pawn, yeah. I mean, I guess what it shows is, is a level of materialism. But it's not really materialism, because he's he's losing a pawn anyway. I don't know what to call it. Yeah, he valued this pawn. He was, like, hanging on to that pawn. Bishop h7, check, king h8, now bishop g6. And now his knight is... It's, like, lost. How is the knight... How is that knight going to be protected? It has to go back. Now his bishop looks ridiculous on h4. Nowhere to go. Here I thought I was winning. Like, my plan had worked out. It was like the A-team. And he was low on time. And he was re reduced to cheapos. I mean, it's hard to suggest a move for black in this position. He's totally blocked here. His bishop can't move. The pawns are coming down like space invaders in the middle. And he has an idea to go 97. I mean, he didn't have to lose the game out, out of hand like happened at the end. Um... Rook e1. Opposite the queen here. He freaks out a little bit later. But it's difficult to suggest a move for black. I think he didn't want to move this. Again, like you said, he was too 
He was too like fixated on hanging on to that pawn on g3. But I don't know what to suggest. Maybe um, Bob's idea of c6 actually it's not that absurd. I don't know. Maybe we could get the rook across. It's kind of a hope chess. This looks really bad for black. I expected him to do this at some point, but he has to watch for e5. He could get, you know, stifled here on the f file. So he defended his bishop with queen h7. Now bishop d2, knight f6, queen d1, queen d7, e5. And I think this is, this is decisive. I was happy at least, you know, the A-team's plan came together. Um, that doesn't mean that the whole thing was sound, but at least I achieved what I wanted to achieve. I sacrificed my, my G-pawn, you know, to gain a superiority in the center, and then the center came through. If anyone here specializes is in, in sexual fetishes, it's definitely you, Bob. All right, knight h5, e6, queen h7, and this pawn is winning strategically. All those little eight-year-old children who love My Little Pony are now disappointed because there's no more pony on my stream. Because you have to drag their minds into the gutter all right, queen h7, knight e4, rook f5. Just because a few, like, you know, mass murderers fetishized my little pony doesn't make it evil. Bishop c3 check, king g8, queen g4. Knight f4 check, this is where he freaked out. <clears throat> All right. We don't have to take that from you. Yeah, at this point, Thomas, he was frustrated and low on time. Yeah, I mean, obviously black can't sack this piece. But let's see what the computer says. It's, it's just lost. You can't even blame him for making the sacrifice. Yeah. There's no, no way. No way. No, if you had a really good chance. I had gone too far. Let's try to focus on, on chess analysis, chess Ebra, because we, we, we let people like that take away from the content of the stream, the point of the stream, you know? We're not focusing on the overlay that's not there. Um, yeah, I want, I, want to, I want to focus on chess. Um, Bob's goal is to, and people like him, is to, to suck away attention from, from the stream. It's like kids in, in class that misbehave to try to distract the teacher, you know, from from teaching properly. Okay. Um, Acerbate up next. Here we go. So game three. Yeah, I, I will implement some kind of overlay at some point. But I do not move quickly. All right. I was thinking maybe Transformers. Something, you know, less sexual than, than My Little Pony. Barbie. Okay, E4, C6, D4, B5. It's a long story. This is funny. This is, um... This is what Kirill Gurgiev played against me in the... No, that was different. That was different. That was against D4, C4. Wait. Kirill Gurgiev played this against me. Okay, Pisatsky played this. 
B5. I lost to this guy, Pisatsky. He played the freaking Alyek in defense or something. Maybe... I don't know how I lost to this guy. He wasn't playing C6, B5 at the time. That must be... That must be new. Oh, no, actually... There's a game, Bui Vin versus Pisatsky. So that was played here in Budapest in 2008. This is his his favorite opening. No, back in, in that day, we saw Ali Atkins' defense. I think Brian Smith just, like, crushed him. Yeah, A4 is interesting. I mean, it's, it's similar to... Um, a St. George thing, where you're, you're trying to undermine his... Extended pawn on b5. But. I'm not really. No, I'm not really impressed. Um, what do we do? Yeah, I mean, like, I don't like c4. We don't want to go here and let him take, like, Paglila. Chesszilla. Um, so Cheprinov. Let's see what Cheprinov did. Knight f3. I mean, Black could transpose some kind of weird Philidor. And like maybe f4 allows Black to play a kind of Karo Khan sort of setup. Ultimately, how how do you answer this? Because this looks kind of shaky. Like the b5 pawn looks shaky. I don't know that the d5 is right either. Black would probably, like, do d6. It's hard. I'm not impressed by bishop d3. That's just an average developing move. Pisotsky played e6. Um, yeah, it's hard to say what Astrobate should do. Astrobate did play f4, ultimately. Theoretical novelty. Well, you got to keep something in mind, too. This guy, right, Pisatsky, he plays the Alyakin's defense. You know what I was playing lately? I've been doing that, right? So it just dawned on me that Pisatsky is probably trying to... Um, he's going to try to incorporate some kind of Alyakin defense thing in this. So b5 is part of the plan. It's like you're going to go knight f6, and then if e5, you put the knight on d5, and there's no c4. Because the pawn on b5 is already there. So you don't actually have to retreat your knight back. Like, if you play knight f6 right away, e5, knight d5, c4, you have to pull the knight back to c7. To play the, the Karo kind. Or the Al Aliakon. But in Pisotsky's variation, the goal is to just do something like this, right? Like knight f6, he didn't do it, but you would think this would be the point, right? That, that's the point, isn't it? To play like knight d5, guarded by the pawn. He ended up playing e6, but it doesn't even make sense. Doesn't this totally make more sense? Okay, white probably won't play e5. White can play a different move. I don't know, knight d2? Or, or bishop here? He's not going to go knight c3 and walk into b4, right? No, I don't know. I, I don't know. So this is a good question as to what White's move should be. This looks lame. Somebody did that. Yeah, knight f3 or bishop d3. Or f4. f4 is interesting. But I still think that black should play knight f6 here. You know, now this, this is even possible. So what does he do? e6. Knight f3. We got like a transposition. And then black played a really strange move here. I guess e6 doesn't make that much sense against f4. Against f4. Probably we should try some kind of Philidor or attack the center with knight f6. Something a little more active. This is passive. Here, here, check. Sorry, that doesn't make any sense. Bishop d2, bishop b4, c3. Yeah, black's play doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So here you could play c4 now, Astrobate. I think that's 
that's a reasonable move. But your your plan looks strong as well. If you're gonna play a4. It makes most sense to play a4 now. What's he gonna do? You weren't consistent enough. Maybe here he can play bishop b7. I love his bishop, by the way. I love what you I love you decorating. Look at that bishop. Now knight f6. Keep the tension. There is no tension, actually. Castles. Asterby played e5, and it's, it's Greek give sacrifice season on h7. If we do it right away, I don't know if we have enough ammunition here. Check, takes, takes, probably not. But I'm not sure. Probably not. I mean, you you should be better prepared. You need you need more force. You need more forces. More horses. More horsepower. So knight g5, that looks good. Takes, takes. And we got the straight up... I forget who I was playing Blobix once, or I did like rook f6 and it was unsound. Can I buy a light squared bishop? If you've been playing Buckhouse... I imagine rook f6 would be playable if it were white to move in this position. So let's just see. Let's let's see. a6, rook f6. What's the evaluation? Yeah, you you can't you can't take it. I mean, you just made it. But it's not it's not the best move. So you're threatening the the Greek gift now. You have the rook lift. Oh shit. This does this help him? He did the rook lift first. So you could do the sack now. Check, king takes, queen h5, king g8, rook f3. Yeah, I mean this is stock. Stock fish. Yeah, it works. You played rook f3. So technically, black could have defended with like g6 or something. And this is just game over. Inaccurate. Rook h3 is inaccurate, but not really. No, actually not. I mean, if king g6, queen h5 check, king f5, g6 check, it doesn't matter. Mate is mate, right? Mate is mate, and mate is final. Here, or here. Always mate with the smallest smallest available piece. I guess, unfortunately, this is our only mate here. Um, dude, you're constantly distracting from, from the theme of the chat, man. All right, you're constantly distracting from from the whole entire point of the stream. Other than that, you know, it's great. One more time and I'll ban him. Perma ban. Takes, king takes, check here, queen h5, and then mate. Nice job. Nice job for Master Bait. Very classic Greek gift sacrifice. Okay, on to the next game before we get further distracted. Resident Spectator versus Husky. This is Resident Spectator with the white pieces. Exchange variation of Queen's Gambit. One of Bay White's best weapons, I think, against the Queen's Gambit declined. What is Husky's repertoire? He was playing the black side of a Catalan in another game. 
I, I mean, I like... I remember David Rigo used to play the Slav, but he would do it using a Queen's Gambit move order. This is different. We're playing Knight F6, C4, E6, Knight C3, D5. You can't avoid it. So Resident Spectator, you're white against a higher rated player. This is from our tournament on Tuesday. What was thanks to me? What did you guys say? Probably thousands of masters. What happened? What's that? Hey, it's Miro. This is the best move order for white, by the way. I like, um... I like delaying c6 for black. Husky plays traditional move order. Now my question is, for resonance spectator, do we play queen c2 first? I normally play queen c2 first. That way you can play either knight f3, h3, or knight on gd e2. So you have lots of options for white in this exchange variation. I think this is the best move. I guess I might have played this against Husky once. I don't remember. Maybe he did some kind of knight h5 thing. I think Nigel Short plays this this crap. I like to call it crap. Crapnik. No, there's no short games. Just crapnik. Short does this, does it in a similar position, not the same as this. I don't know, guys. I don't like that for black. I don't really buy the h6 stuff. You should play queen c2. You know, a lot of people play h6. I think it's a weak move. I told the story many times about how my, one of my teammates cost us, like, moving to the first division a few years back because he kept losing games with this line with black. Um, it seems stupid to me. I don't understand, like, what's wrong with the normal laying on bd7. But this is a different call now. Now you played knight f3. And knight f3... It's it's old fashioned. It's it's not bad necessarily. But I I don't really like what Husky did here either, although this move has a good score. Again, I don't understand really the point of, of this. Is he gonna trade pieces? I mean my assumption if you play H six, by the way you can play you can play this. Dre have played Bishop F four. If knight h5, what do we do? You can take, you can let him take on f4, you can play bishop e5, or you can play bishop g3. The engine says bishop e5. These might be, cor that's a, definitely a correspondence game, the first one. Alberto Juki. Bishop e5. Yeah, I still don't like h6. So what's black's best move here? Bishop g4 has been played. h3. Bishop takes f3. That's not very impressive. My personal opinion still stands. I don't like h6. Um, until I see a good reason. You know, unless this works... Epriyashi versus Farago Shandor. I mean, should we consider Bishop G3 here? And Castle and Queen's side? I mean, White's position is... It's an exchange Karakhan. White is okay. It's a Karakhan exchange with colors reversed. White doesn't have to castle Queen's side like a maniac, but it's a possibility. Um, I was talking about this with, with Hey, It's Miro today in a very similar position. Something like this, if you recall, where I said, like, trading the, the bishop pair off with, like, bishop f5 and a Karo Khan. So you have two knights versus bishop and knight, you know, trade off blacks, trade off blacks bishop pair, essentially. Kind of a ironic move, because this white's good bishop, actually. 
I, I guess I, I, I like white better here. So that's a possibility. I don't like H6. You know, it has a good score according to the database, but that doesn't mean a lot. The sample size of 16 games is, is irrelevant, you know? That's an irrelevant sample size. Bishop H4, Rook E8, Queen C2. Now we transpose back. What about Knight H5? Now it's even worse. By the way, there's the possibility of this type of move sometimes. Black has to be really careful because you've got like Knight H5. Can be very problematic for Black. For Black to like defend the F7 square in some positions. So it looks like white has a good game here. Okay, knight e4 is, is theory. That, that's got to be the right idea. There was something with the pawn sacrifice, wasn't there? There's some kind of grab here. Grab and go. I don't know. I mean, there's so many positions that are just, just a little different than the other one, you know? I, I remember some years ago there was there was a line where White was trying to grab a pawn on e4. Does it work if we do this, this? You know, this is basically losing a piece, right? You can't do that. This is definitely a possibility, though. And after this, I think that white is better. This guy with white, 2,500. I don't know if bishop f5 works. The passenger. Well, I mean, the problem with bishop takes e7 is that you're you're forcing black to reinforce this control of e4. Plus, you're changing pieces. When I'm white, especially, I don't want to trade pieces. You know, if I open an h file, I like this a little bit better. Yeah, that's that's a standard Karo Khan exchange variation thing, man, where you're like giving up your bishop on g6. But my problem is like this position. This is this is like probably a very standard position, except for h6, you know. I've I've played these this type of position, but just like black wouldn't normally have the move h6 played. So the question is how does that affect how does that affect black's position? Negatively? Or positively. If you stick a knight on e5, black's going to have a lot more serious problems playing f6. I continue continue to say I, I, I hate h6. Um, you can't get the knight out of, out of e5 as easily as possible. There's this... I, I played games like this when I was a kid. Um, but here's the thing. This isn't really this isn't really a bad bishop. It's a very very active bad bishop. It's extremely dangerous. Um I've played this type of thing before with white, but I I, I always kind of struggle with it. It looks like some players, a lot of players actually just castled here. I mean, the thing is if he plays f5, he loses this square. That that's a serious issue. Now we can just kick him out with f three. So it's not easy for Black to complete his development. Knight d seven. A lot of games now. I can't believe it. How many games there are here? But I'm not impressed by castles. I really don't know what else to do. I, I want to see this again. Bishop g3, bishop f5. 
This might be a correspondence game. Oh no, it's an old game from 1991. Weird. Hmm. What a strange move. Bishop f4, the computer wants to play. Bishop e4. Bishop e4. Knight e4, pawn e4, knight d2. Now who has the bad bishop? Now is the bad bishop that's not bad. Now it's white that has the bad bishop that's not bad. Bishop takes d2, queen d2. You got an f3 break, possible queenside. I'd rather be white. It's a tough call though, Resonant Spectre, I don't know. I just don't like these so much. Knight e5 looks more active. You know, remember, your knight can't get trapped because he's going to play... He can't play f6. The guy actually played f6. Wow. That's crazy. There's only one game where someone played this. There's nothing wrong with this move, actually. Okay, f6. Weakening his king side, knight g6. Queen f7, knight f4. I mean, it's it's a reasonable French here for you. Your knight's not getting... I kind of like knight e5. This feels claustrophobic, you know? I think he's supposed to be able to get in knight d7, knight f6, though. So bishop f5. He played f5. Hmm. If, if bishop f5, f3... Is not happening with the open file here. Castle's queenside would be really, really dangerous. So you have to castle short. I love this. The computer suggests king f1. No, no, that was knight f1. Okay, okay. I was gonna say. Castle's king side, knight d7, f3, knight f6, rook a e1. Diabolic. Dr. Diabolic. You wound someone up with... Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's just being provocative, trying to, to be annoying. Teasing me that he won't subscribe, and... And then he's still obsessed with... With my overlay, with the, with the brony pony. I don't know, man. The guy has some serious issues. I thought I had serious issues. Alright. No, this is playable. Not that inspiring. Okay, f5. Castles. Bishop e6. I'm going to turn off the engine now. You know, so you're supposed to play for the f3 break. I was playing this with white when I was like 1800. But, um... Again, like, h6 just doesn't seem like a particularly good move for black. It doesn't really help him in any way. I don't like knight b3, though. You have to kill the evil center. You could prepare it if you wanted to with rook a e1. Of course, we gotta make sure we don't get our exchange trapped with this. Feingold doesn't approve of either side's play after f3. We don't care what Feingold thinks. Um, Alright, bishop e6. So what about f3? It's the best move. Three games here, white didn't play it in all three games. My moves are the best two moves. Rook ac1, lame. Rook fd1, what are you doing? That would be my interpretation of these three moves played here in this position. By the way, Bui Vin versus Zoltan Varga, that's like suspicious Grandmaster draw. Probably not even a real game in the sense that they just probably made like 30 moves and agreed to a draw without even looking at the board. The other games, you know, it's it's like Kapostash and some other random 2300. All, all cases, White made a lame move here. This is the only good move in this position. I mean, you can set it up. This is a telegraph move, too, by the way. When you play rook a1, you might as well, like, 
you know, paste a sign on your chest that says, I'm going to play F3 next move. So, this is the key question. The really big question is how we recapture on F3. Are we taking with the rook, guarding the E3 pawn? Are we taking with the pawn, taking our life in our hands? Probably not. Um, or are we taking with the knight with the idea of a sort of blocker knight on e5. <sighs> I don't think that white has an advantage, you know, that this is the problem. Takes knight d7, rook a e1, you know, here for example, rook f2. Yeah, it's knight takes. Yeah, this is this is the best line. Knight takes, knight d7. And then the computer wants to play h3 for some weird reason. It might be seeing this coming down the line to a theater near you. My evaluation is equal. You know, so if you expect it to refute the queen's gambit, it's not happening. Yeah, I mean, I think you've got to go back to bishop takes e4 and um, look at alternatives to doing that. Castles here, bishop f5. What if we just, like, did knight d2 or something? Knight d7. Here we could do a delayed f3. Rook a e1. Bishop g6, f3, I'm kind of liking this. Knight takes d2, queen d2, and then black played. Yeah, I mean, I guess. I don't know, man, about f5 here. You guys, this is another old one from 1991. How do you feel about f5 for black in this position? Is that a good idea, master, or a bad idea? There's a very strong chance that's a bad idea. We played e4. White was a fearful, fearful dude. So there's a pin here. Can't we just play like queen c2? Man, I mean, even f4, man. This is like my game. I don't think that white could possibly be worse here after f4. This is pretty good for white. This is a move I played against Berkic a month ago. This. Different position, but it was the same idea, the same structure, the same idea of guarding e3. This guy doesn't realize how much better he is in this position. White is just better. And he blew it up with e4. Yeah, anyway, it was an interesting game, dude. Um, so you played here, f5, castles, and then knight b3. Knight b3 is kind of weird. You know, you're taking pressure off the center. You you, you feel like you're, you're kind of going the wrong way. And he's quickly mounting, you know, solid control of d5 and, and e4. Knight c5. So you have you have minority attack, maybe. But he has a kind of kingside presence now. And a3 is very, very, very hesitant. You know, this is a very slow move. I'm a little surprised he played knight d5, but... I don't know that black should trade pieces in this position. You know, I think he's making a mistake. He should be playing for a win with more space, but I don't think trading pieces is going to help him. And b6 is probably a mistake too. So now he has a target here. Although black's very solid, he got in f4. So I think it's time for... Um, 
some serious uh, serious concern after f4. You gotta you gotta take you gotta take on d5 and take on f4 and pray that e3 doesn't work. So I see that's exactly what you did. He took with a pawn. I don't believe it. No. The nuclear bishop on d5. This is extremely dangerous, man. He has, he has this. You've got to find a very accurate move now. I think rookie one might work. Whew, that's really touch and go. Ooh, you lost. Holy shit, queen f7. Oh my god. Holy shit. Queen f7. This is tough, man. Oh my god. Wow. The nuclear bishop and you're and you're like almost dead. It's a really instructive mistake by Husky. Who's playing like way too fast, by the way. Bishop takes d5, dude. Look at that bishop. That's a bad bishop. And that's a good knight? I don't think so. If you take an f4, you're like lost almost. Probably here you can defend with knight d2. This looks really scary though. Maybe not. Yeah, you, you gave him too much space and too much play on these files here when you started evacuating on the queen side. But this is amazing. So you're okay now. Yeah, I would I would stick to the dark squares. But maybe you wanted to keep d2 free for your knight. Wow. I mean, so if you play queen d2, he has rook c4. Either way, you're still in an unpleasant position. There's also this. I wonder if you could pull something off with like knight d2 immediately. I mean, this is very dangerous, but it would leave d5 unprotected. Your knight is a disaster. You never, ever, ever put a knight on b3. The first rule of chess. Alright, so we bail out, now we lost the file. If queen d2, you know, this is still like probably not as bad as what happened. And he's very accurate tactically, pinning you. Now your queen is almost getting trapped in some lines. Okay, this was a good idea to trade. Now, now why not up? Clearly black takes the file. <sighs> Still not easy, but I think you, you probably are right on the verge of hanging on here. Queen c7, knight f1. I mean, it looks very unpleasant, right? Queen c7, knight f1, rook c3. This definitely doesn't look fun. But maybe there's something to your move. You know, you're, you're going with the queen to d1. You keep this, you keep this free. By not going to e3, he keeps f1 free. Did you say that already? You also stop, you know, bishop bishop h5. He has, he has like queen h4 here. Probably not a big deal necessarily, but it is something to think about. No, he doesn't. Your rook is hanging. His rook is hanging. Okay, queen c7, knight f1. 
Good defense. Knight e3. Rook d2. Queen c1. Is that forced? It's a good thing he played h6. As much as I hate that move, this is the first positive aspect of h6. When you check him on c8, he's not getting perpetualed or mated. But you seriously have check and queen takes d5? No. He's not threatening anything but your rook, right? Yeah, that is important. Is that rook important? You have queen e5. This pawn is very, very strong. <sighs> He's got a rook on the seventh, a killer pawn. The bishop is stronger than the knight. Now you're threatening that, though. Oh, man. Are we still alive here? King e2? King e2? Can I play king e2? No. Now you're completely lost. Unbelievable. It's like a... La Machina. If you take on d2, he's winning anyway. Yeah, that was an interesting game. Alright, Mule Skinner is up next. The Mule Skinner. What is that? How do I delete that? I just deleted all my notifications. Did I just do that? I think I just deleted all my notifications. I hope there wasn't anything important in there. Oh my god! This is, is that like the master delete button that I just pressed? No notifications. Okay, well, I mean, it's not going to delete them. Like, if I go to someone like Asturbait, I'm still going to see the message he sent me, right? The chat. It didn't delete, like, personal messages. Um... The Biachinov. All right, the master delete button. Don't press the master delete button. Mule Skinner, where are you? Oh shit! So I lost Mule Skinner. All right. Is somebody gonna donate some bits to the stream today? Gift sub, Astrobeat. Come on, guys. This is like the most sad week we ever had. <sighs> Did you guys give all your money to like? Hikaru, seriously, like Bob said. Profile inbox. Come on, somebody's got to donate some bits and, and gift subs to the stream at some point. We're working hard here. Goiju with a thousand bits, see? Ye ask and ye shall receive. Thank you, Goiju. Did you submit a game that you'd like to analyze? Yeah, we spent a record amount of money at the supermarket today. I need those bits. Prices are really crazy here. Um, could you? Do we have a game submission from you? It's not mandatory, but if you like. Um, this is Mule Skinner 90 plus 30 against weaker. A young, weaker player. Weak, young fish. Oh, Plankhorn, how do I submit a game? Just send me a message on... Send send the game, the link to the game on, on Leech Us to my account, Sparkle Horse. I don't know why Plankhorn always makes me think of Foghorn, Lighthorn. Astrobate makes you think of Looney Tunes. And then Plankhorn. Oh, man. All games are bad. Um, I'm white in this 90 plus 30 against weaker young player. How do I know which one it is? He's black here. Weaker young player. You think it's this one? We already looked at this. 
Wait against weaker young player. Maybe it's this one. Wait, game three. Okay, he said it was game three. It doesn't have a name for white. Give it a name. So, Mule Skinner always plays the Spanish. Cozio variation. This is an interesting line that I don't know that much about. Um, so, are they here? What was 100 euros or pounds is now about 145. Or 1.0 is 1.45. I mean, I guess it also comes down to, like, exchange. I mean, the British economy is a little bit different. It's separate, but I think it's worldwide. I saw an article today about the price of eggs in the United States. It was like they have to put, like, apology. There's, like, apology notes next to the price of the eggs in the supermarket. Like, oh, sorry, customers, for how expensive the eggs are. Um... That really makes me feel better when the supermarket like puts an apology next to the price. It totally makes everything okay. We're really sorry we have to charge you so much. It's just killing us to do that. It was like six dollars. Hawaii's always going to be more expensive, right? Because everything is it's an island economy. Castles is good. Um, I don't know, you know, I mean, fundamentally, I want to play D4. But I don't really know, um, no, it's the Cozio, not the Costco. The Costco defense. God, my jokes are bad. All right, knight on G to E7, castles, G6. Okay, so now we're, we're playing, um, a kind of... Smyslav variation hybrid. So whenever you do g6, I would think like d4 becomes a viable option with this like bishop g5 stuff. There are definitely no sacrifices in the Costco lines. I gotta stop with this. Stupid puns. Yeah, I mean, I can't blame you for playing d4. There's this guy, Jurgis, Jurgis Petschak, or Petschatz, I don't know how that's pronounced. He's really, out of nowhere, like, this Slo Slovakian kid. Um, the first, like, monstrously strong Slovakian that I can recall in a very long time. Um, that's, a, that's a name to keep an eye on. He was playing in, the, he's playing in my Hungarian Super League. He destroyed... Um, I, I think Nidic in the Hungarian Super League this season already, which is a pretty impressive uh, beatdown on board one in the Hungarian Super League. D4. E takes D4. Okay. So here we have options. This is Mule Skinner's game. I know that Costco would approve of this sacrificing material here with c3 but mule skinner you know this type of gambit is is very very sound just pretend you're playing the smith mora or something um and the other thing is like sometimes we can fling this bishop into g5 romanish's birthday was earlier this week on tuesday that's why romanish is so amazing i mean 71 look at you can find a game like Romanish and Smyslav, 1981. That's awesome. But to be to be fully honest, I think like I like the C3. After pawn takes, like knight takes, and now this bishop g5 really has a lot of. Speaking of knightich, um, the bishop g5 has a lot more bite. I think you know with the knight on c3, its ability to come in here. So I like these pawn sack ideas all right but oh my god Safeway you have Safeway Manoa Hawaii one dozen eggs currently nine dollars all right Bishop G7 you should get your own chickens Jessebra I have a friend 
He's living in like Kansas City or something. And he he posted that his high his side hustle is like selling eggs now. He must have a couple chickens. Aster, but you should get some chickens too. Or sell duck eggs. I was like, dude, you can't have a, a, a fox guarding the hen house. It's like a, another bad joke. Um, I'm used to going to Romania where like all the people in the village have their own chickens. It's like totally standard. I mean, Hungary in small villages too, obviously. Um, all right, bishop g7, c3. So this is kind of lame, what Mule Skinner did here. I saw what you did there. But if you're going to take on d4 with a knight and then have to play, like, c3, it's kind of lame. How about a more dynamic move that's not lame? Bishop e3. I have a really crazy idea here that white could maybe sacrifice something, but it's just never gonna happen. I was thinking like you could sacrifice the exchange. You could imagine like black's, black's king side would be so weak in this type of situation that if black took that, you know, good luck with that. You know, I don't think that's real safe. Yeah, I would never take the rook. I would never take the rook. I would take the pawn maybe and then go back to g7. Yeah, c3 is c3 is lame. Unfortunately. I guess this move is okay like provoking some weaknesses. He doesn't have that many choices, I suppose. This looks a bit more fundamental. But once again, you know, I think bishop e3 is more fundamental than c3. Yeah, now black played queen e8, which is a really weird move. Theoretical novelty. Queen on e8. It's like a king's Indian. There's no knight coming in here. But yeah, that move looks creepy. I mean, you could play h6, what's the problem? You can't play this variation with black and be afraid to play like h6 and g5. You have to be kidding me. I mean, I'm serious, like, if you're afraid to play h6 and g5, and you're playing the system, you should be playing something else. You know, I mean, th this is like standard procedure, probably, for this type of variation. Wow. I know that a lot of times blacks will, black will do like d5. So let's see, knight d4, cd4, d5, for example. Fixing, fixing that central pawn on d4. But what he did here is horrible, queen e8. How is that queen going to get into the game? Yeah, this is what I expected, rookie one. This is good. Looks good. Queen e8 is almost like a double question mark. He goes from one pin into the other. Plus the queen is just badly placed there. Rook e1, a6. Now I don't know, you know. Obviously you can just play very safely with bishop f1. I like this. If knight e5, you know, you have to make a decision about which way to go. But I think, you know, Mule Skinner just made the normal Roy Lopez sort of retreat. Obviously, b5 might come. And then black played. A horribly ugly looking move, c5. That's, yeah, wow. So if you, if you borrow the idea that I had in the other position, and you... You put it here, it's just devastating. So now we do d takes c. It's like game over, isn't it? Bishop takes here, knight d2 resigns. 
I mean, this is ridiculous. Look at this position. There's no way. There's no way in God's green earth that that black will survive this position. Wait, has everything. There's like this diagonal, knight c4, knight d6, this over here. I mean, you're 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 pressing his queen on the e file. This is perverse. That's so sick. C5 was such a bad move by Black. So you just take it, you give him the pawn on B2, and he can't even take the exchange because he'll get mated after knight D2. Like Gina said in the other position. There's no way that Black can play bishop takes rook here. Minus four. So Mule Skinner... Maybe Mule Skinner's move is good too. Let's be honest. His move is good too. But I think this this other move is like more more devastating immediately. Knight c3 is good too. You have a very big knight d5. And this is somewhat annoying. And I think that's the, the, the point of this. There's no more this and there's no more this. There's no more d5 and there's no more. This pawn is really just totally binds him up. Um, so this doesn't contain him as much. B5 gives him a little bit of a shot, and maybe bishop b7. Yeah. Now you take on c5. You still got a good position, but not, not crushing like that other line. Here, I don't know what to suggest for black. I guess this is forced. Take, take queen c8. And those pawns look nice. As long as we can keep them protected. I don't really give a shit about the b2 pawn. Let him have that. But Mule Skinner, he did exactly the opposite. I feel like we want to play bishop b7 to protect the pawn on c5. Give him this one. And, and keep an offensive kind of stance here with white. We have such good attacking chances. I mean, he's not even threatening to take that. But let's just say here, 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 here. Dude, this is this is very strong for white. I mean, the bishops are both strong. Maybe you can play h4, h5. So queen c8. Rook b1. This is a very passive move to play. In a position where you should be very dominant. Egg deflation. Trading pieces, not good. And then suddenly black black has a kind of active chance. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We managed to hang on to a pawn. But we have no threats at all. And Black's got some activity. Not that easy. I don't know what else to suggest. Do we have a tactic? Do we have a pawn sack? Anything? The one thing I'm seeing in Mule Skinner's play, there's a lot of hesitance. When he really has a chance to go for a, a strong line, he kind of wimps out a lot of cases. Rook b1 was another example. Too many spots where you had a very strong strong move and you, you kind of chickened out. Maybe because it's a young player and, and you're you're thinking, oh, the young player is going to be good tactically. This is crazy, though. Wow, bishop c8. That's not good. He can't play this because of bishop g5, so suddenly black just doesn't have a good way to defend the, the d7 pawn. But he does. I thought I saw a putty tat. He has queen f5. I mean, how bad is it? It's not that bad, right? That's got to be better than playing bishop c8. Anything's better than bishop c8. You can't play bishop c8, man. You might as well just resign. That's so sick. Oh, 
man, is this does this even work, my dude? It's good, huh? Bishop d5 seems simpler. I don't really like leaving my pieces unprotected. Rook a7. Okay, pawn takes bishop, queen takes rook wins. So rook b8. Check. Bishop f8, bishop h6. He's done. This is weird, the way that black went wrong in this game. I feel like Mule Skinner was kind of lucky. He let it get way out of control. There was some moment where it felt like black was actually bordering on better. Maybe I'm I'm full of crap. Right about now, after rook b1, the best he come up with is rook e8. Here. Then queen e5, here. Black never could quite... Never could quite get out of it. Felt very close, though. Gotta be more, a little more aggressive, Mule Skinner. Um, and taking advantage of your opportunities. I feel like that, that game almost slipped away from you completely. But the opening should be played more of the Gambit style. Um, Alright, subscriber stream. What What is this? Everyone sucks but me, Goiju. Alright, those will be our last games tonight. Chapter 5. This was... Saeed's. Correct? Alright. It's a Benko. Wait, decline with knight f3. Whatever. The engine says it's dubious or the opening sport. It's a fine move. It's just a white wine. Queen c2. The positional line. It's a positional line for white. Mr. Chess, 1978. He's getting into the, the spirit of things here. Okay, so this... This isn't the only way for black to play, right? Um, I remember um, my friend Nodge Gabor playing a game a couple years ago. Do they do like B4? I know this is like a weird line, huh? Is this a thing? Looks like the variation doesn't have a great score. Maybe I'm thinking of a different position. E6, you know, you should seriously consider, screw it, just transpose to the Blumenfeld. You should learn to play the Blumenfeld. It would give you, like, a, a whole other aspect. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I like the Blumenfeld. Um, I did a video series on that. It's not perfect, it has its flaws, but it would give you a, a lot of victories as well. So you played um, g6, queen c2. Um, I've seen this before, but I don't know anything about the line. All I know is, like structurally, I like black. Black has the, the solid pawn island. And I've got the structure a lot in the Benko decline myself. Usually I play b6. So white has space. Um, but black has that good pawn island, you know, which could win in a lot of games. Bishop g7, castles. And then I would castle. I don't see any reason why black has to play knight on bd7 here. This isn't really a problem. I've seen people do stuff like this. It's... Well, it's not even an option here, is it? You just take, and this is hanging. So, yeah, I think this this is inaccurate. But it's probably okay. Wait now, plays h3 to stop the maneuver knight g4. It looks like that's the most common move. Castles, rook e1. 
Yeah, this is pretty strange, man. Yeah, I chess. Don't buy it. I don't get. I don't get any percentage on that. I, I sold it out. I sold out. Rookie one. Buy it because it's it's a good. I did good work on that, but but it's um. Don't buy it to support me financially, because I don't get any percentage on those. I don't really like I chess. That was for the chess world. Um, why would knight not be developed here to knight c3? H3 is a move to stop knight g4. You ask why it, what it does. You know, he's stopping knight g4. Acerbeat, another favorite acerbate maneuver. Okay, rookie one. Apparently that turns out that's a move. Knight b6. Okay, it gives him bishop f1. I didn't understand. The point of rookie one is to give him a retreat back to f1, which isn't objectively forced. But otherwise, like you're gonna give up the bishop or like what, put it on d3 where it can be attacked at some point. I mean, I suppose this this is a move. The bishop's not all that active on f1. Yeah, I looked at lines like this. So e6 is pretty good here. I looked at something like this once with princess chess. Helping her with her opening repertoire once. Um, although I don't know much about the line, I like e6. And so you have a corresponding weakness here, but no big deal. Yeah, and you can play d5. This this looks pretty pretty okay. Wait, and interestingly, he doesn't play knight c3 again. I mean, what happens if knight c3? You get in d5. I don't even care if I lose this pawn on d5. Knight d5, knight f d5, e d5, black played queen d5. It's nothing. So bishop g5. h6. You play perfectly. Now the question is where he goes here. I guess h4 makes some sense. The problem is your your queen doesn't... Oh my god, sorry. <coughs> I accidentally backed up. Uh, your queen doesn't have a lot of good squares here after bishop h4. Queen b8, queen c8, queen c7. Where do you put it? Stuart Conquest played queen d7. I mean, you could obviously play g5, though. Maybe this simple solution, you know? Just do it. I was just wondering, like, why the hell we can't just play this? I don't understand, like, what white has here. I guess he takes on d5, but I'm not scared. This looks active enough for black. I think I think you're okay. I mean, I guess the point is like this pawn would be protected. Maybe white could win a pawn. No, you're gonna take the bishop now. This looks good. Yeah. What does the computer say? Yeah, g5 is the best move. That's strange though. It wants to go knight h5, not d5. Maybe we're missing something. The engine is claiming an advantage for white here. It's a little surprising, but there's an idea here. This pawn I can give you. This is this is the idea. He can play bishop e5, trading off your kingside defender. I don't really like that. That's why Seward didn't like, you know, that's why he played queen d7. But it looks like this pawn is something you can sacrifice. I'll be honest, you know. I think this is a reasonable pawn sacrifice for black. The pawn on b2 is pretty weak. Um, yeah, but it's true. Maybe you don't have to. But I'm not sure where to put the queen. 
This this isn't the simple either. Let's see what happened. Oh, he then did knight h5. Rook d1 and g5. Interesting. He just, like, snapped the guy's bishop off. Wow. This looks like a good position for black. Black is black is okay. Um, so what what happened? Your opponent put the bishop on e3. This is funny. Yeah, that's such a lame square. So you have knight e4. I don't think so. Although you want to look for this kind of idea, you also have d5. You didn't play it. It's a very natural move. I thought this also makes sense. Um, rook c8. Here, rook c7. I'm not sure I like this, though. So I'm probably going to cancel that. I mean, d5 is a good move. Yeah. You should have played d5. This interferes with your rooks. It's a little uncoordinated. And, and I don't think you have any sacks here. So what happens if bishop takes? You have, um, you have a pin. I mean... Yeah, like here. Or maybe the other one. I don't know. Looks good. So he does queen take c5. Okay. Apparently this was a mistake you should have taken with the pawn. Well, it's difficult to decide. Is the problem that white has like bishop d4? He went. Yeah, this is this is a nice move, Queen A three. I was concerned about this, but it can't happen. This queen's hanging. Oh, okay, he has to trade queens if he wants to play Bishop D four. It can't happen. Yeah, so this is a very strong move, Queen A three. Okay. And if you play this, what happens? He has takes? I'm not sure what's going on here. Isn't queen c2 okay? Knight e4, this is the engine's line. Knight e4, d e4, knight d4. Shit. Yeah. Yeah, it's a problem. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, obviously queen c8 was an inaccuracy, but we have to deal with this. So basically you're, like, down a pawn. You're not down a pawn. You're just, like, worse structurally. All right, knight takes d2, bishop takes d2 here, bishop c3. This makes sense. This isn't so bad. But you really want to trade queens. Now your king side is your king side is weak. If you can trade queens, you're you're out of danger. This was a pretty strong player playing white. I feel like they knew theory. They played very well positionally. If you trade queens, you're probably okay. That looks like a good move. He's heading back over here, keeping the queens on the board. You know, this is a, this is trouble. You know, this could be trouble. With um with bad bishop versus strong knight on d4. I don't know, you know, if we want to allow that. Crazy idea, but could you play d4?
Aster, but you've been plundering again? I'm scared of queen d2. Because black can get mated really fast here. There's some nasty threats, man. If like this, this. Black's, Black's already facing the threat of like rook takes e6 here and knight g5. That's how fast you're, you can go south in this position. Because of the dark square weakness. That's why queen b2 seems like a good move. Um, oh, apparently he had a better way with queen d6. This is also... And then maybe there's some kind of rook takes bishop too. Yeah, now we have like a technical position. I'm not really worried about the ending. It's the queens on the board that bothers me here. Phew, that's ugly. No, I mean, this is borderline lost. Um, but why can't you play bishop d7? This has got to be better than, than rook e8 or queen d7. Queen d7, I'm, I'm scared he could take. I mean, your king side is really shaky here. Look at those pawns. The knight on d4 is a beast, I know. I don't want to trade it off, really. Well, I guess he has ways to prepare it, like queen d2 first. Anyway, I gotta move along. Um, but I thought, like, this might... Might put up some resistance. This isn't gonna be so easy. Thank you, Plant Card. Gifting a tier 1 sub to Nabot. He gifted another tier 1 sub... To that Chitone dude. So we got two gift subs and a thousand bits. From Plantcorn and Plantcorn, did you submit a game? Are you everyone sucks but me? All right. Um, I think you're, you're you're on the verge of hanging on with Bishop D seven, but it is it's an unpleasant position. Here you also might be on the verge of hanging on. What if he does, like, g4 to restrict you from playing bishop f5? I thought you might play bishop f5. I guess it doesn't do anything anyway. He doesn't have to. Yeah, this is passive, though. I don't like rook e8. Really hard to get any counterplay here for black. I understand why you played rook e8, but it's not... Not really a fortunate square. Now, can you try to trade queens? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And you're threatening queen f6. Wow. I think you're, you're hanging on now. I mean, this is probably a draw. Even though he has a monster knight, he can torture you. If, he, if you trade queens, you're okay. He avoided the exchange of queens again. Wow. Dude, you gotta consider sacrificing exchange here. This is like how I... <laughs> how I didn't lose against um, Heinrich Danielson. We've gotta consider sacrificing exchange, at least. Probably it's, it's not necessary, though. I'm not a fan of Rook C8, though. Oh, okay, okay. I was wondering what you were doing. I didn't understand. I get it. Okay. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah, you're not... You're not lost. It's just kind of a torturous position. But why don't you just trade the other set of rooks now? I don't think you're, you're losing. He's got a good... Good coordinated three pieces here. I think you should trade anything you can trade. Um, reduces attacking chances. 
This isn't, this is bad what you did. Why couldn't you play this here? <clears throat> I mean, he has rook f3, but I don't know. I mean, what does it do? It doesn't do anything. You're fine after this. You, you tied yourself up again. Unnecessarily. Wow. That was really scary. You literally tied yourself up. <sighs> Man. This guy is a good player. For the second time, you were virtually lost. And then rookie four. Yeah, I guess rookie four is okay. You could also just trade. You actually might be better now. With that pass pawn. Queen d5, it's like the... It's like the husky game we saw earlier. I don't know if f5 is necessary or not. This guy didn't want to trade queens. Man, he is pretty hardcore. Can you... You can't play g5, right? I know it looks crazy. I don't think f5 is that bad. Can you actually play g5? <laughs> he has queen d4, alright. I missed it. No. You should be better here. I wonder if you should... The obvious move is bishop c4. Unfortunately, he takes on f5. Your pawns are, like, fixed on the wrong color and then plays this. It's probably a draw. I was wondering if you could take on g4 and, and play maybe like g5. I think it's probably a draw. It's just a draw. This is an interesting idea to try to get your king over. Try to get over here. No, this is a blunder. Maybe not. You gotta try to go. You're not getting anywhere. Okay, if you have to play a4... If you have to play a4, you're kinda screwed. You just, you're trying to win an unwinnable position now. It's just a draw. Yeah, he was very careless there. Pushing his pawn up. So you have to play bishop takes. You can eventually walk over. He's going to come up. <laughs> H pawn. You have here, bishop c4, bishop e2. Wait a sec. 
He has knight takes e3. And h4. You're taking? What? You had this? That is so sick. And he has bishop g8. Oh my god. That was the only reason that, that his line didn't work. Whew. So I was thinking you should just go here, you know, and, and put your bishop on e2. It's a much simpler way to play, but I don't know if it wins or not. He has this. I guess, theoretically, you could even lose. Yeah, so your line is better. Very interesting. Wow, what a game. That's crazy. But it looks like it's still a draw. I don't think you should, um... I don't think you should... I think you just move your king. You shouldn't move your bishop. I think it's just a draw, right? You can't win. I mean, this this is only possible to lose this position. Wow. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, you had no losing chances even after he queened, objectively. Um, that was a really fun game. Very interesting. Game six... This is Tipu Bot. Oh, this is your game with me. There was a draw, a stalemate in that last game? <laughs> okay, I don't wanna I don't wanna know about it. Was that a blitz game or something? It was high quality for a blitz game. Okay, so this is my game with Tipu Bot. I, I made a mistake here. You know, black's not supposed to play a6. This is a very bad move. This is not a real move. I, I was angry because I, I meant to play a6, bishop a4, d6 against you, Tipu Bot, and I forgot, and I played d6. So when you castled, I was like, oh, well, maybe she'll just let me transpose, was my thinking. This is a very bad move. Um, I agree with your decision here to take. Surprising there's a Duda Nakamura game. I think definitely takes is, is best. What does the engine say? Yeah. It likes takes. I mean, it's not forced, but I think it probably is the best move. Um, and then you play d4, of course. Yeah, I mean, I know better than this. This is a bad Steinitz for, for black. So I have to play f6. And, um... I mean, I don't trust Black's position at all. You know, I, I don't... I, I didn't intend to play this. But I was kind of happy to see you play C3, because that, that looks... First of all, it looks slow. And secondly, you know, you've got weakness on the white squares and no light square bishop, so I don't think you should be putting your pawns on dark squares here. You see, in the game, you ended up playing C4 later. That makes sense here. Yeah, you should have played this structure. If you're going to play it, you play it right away. This is a bad move. I mean, I suppose... Um, what else? I mean, knight c3 is a totally normal move. Why has no one played knight c3 here? I don't really know. I guess they didn't want to block the c-pawn. I can't imagine knight c3 is bad, though. I mean, I guess there's some cases where this is better. You know, you've got these kind of squares. C3 is definitely not right. 
Now I, I don't have much room. I mean, maybe Mama Jarva would do like G5 here, but I don't think that's... I don't think that's a safe idea. No, apparently, like, knight g6 was best. But I went wrong, it felt like. Rook e1. I didn't know what to do. Um, not playing this type of line on a regular basis. I did not know what to do here with, with my position. Um, not happy with this bishop, obviously. But, I mean, I can't just, like, open it up. With, with this file, what am I going to do, you know? Like, it's not an easy position to play for black. What am I going to do, like h5 or something? I mean, put my king on f7? I did not know how to play this. And you were very, very solid. So this seemed automatic. Now knight e3. This makes sense, you have good control of the center. Maybe, again, I, I can't... Maybe I could do something crazy like d5. It just looks risky, you know? So here again, yeah, no light square bishop. That's the important thing. Yeah, d5, wow. I mean, I looked at the position from black's perspective, not from white's. But, um, you know, this is not a move I thought was safe to play. So I did this weird rook f7 just to free up the f8 square. And this is strong. You know, at this point, I was like, oh shit, you know, maybe I'm worse. It looks like a King's Indian. Um, but the positional plan of, of c4, c5 is, is a good idea against those doubled pawns. And I, I referenced the game Fisher Wade, which was another line. I don't remember what it was. It was another variation with where, where Bobby Fisher did like C4, C5. Um, I mean, this is super passive. But the problem is you have tactics, right? I mean, if I go Knight F4... I mean, I guess I can play knight f4. Just, just play knight f4. I was afraid of my center getting undermined, but this this move is probably okay. Here, am I wasting time? You know, I feel like is the question. You you played c b3 here. The engine doesn't like my move with knight f4. It just thinks it was a waste of time. I mean, it looks like a normal king's Indian move. First of all. And I can play g6, even g5 maybe, but but at least keep keep your knight knight off of f5. And I did think think like you could do anything about it. You know you don't really want to go here. So I, I thought knight f4, and also obviously this square. I mean it seems like a good move. The engine hates it. It likes a5, which I played later anyway. So here now apparently. You should have done this move. What's the point? What's the point with this? I mean, I'm not really in love with taking this way. But it would open up my bishop. That hangs my queen, though. That's that's the problem. Oh, oh the problem is I'm dropping a pawn. Oh, shit. That's why this is not a good move. Now I get it. So I just hung my e pawn. Oh snap. Is that a problem? That's why knight f4 was no good. So ironically I could have done it before. While this is still protected, I should have played knight f4 now. You know, and then when you go whatever, I can do whatever. Whatever I would do. A5. I never should have played bishop f8, I guess and unprotected my queen, or else I have to play queen e8, you know, get off, get off the line like I did later. So I just, we just both missed the tactic on e5. 
I left it hanging for another move, and you still didn't see it. So you're just thinking like purely strategic and not not calculating. You know, interestingly, um, I might be able to do a desperado. Nope. No. I mean, even you even yeah you even have like bishop takes e5. This is really dumb. So I just left the pawn hanging for two moves, and then I played. How did this go? Wait, this was the game? I did this? Oh, I did this. I did this. Unbelievable. Rook c1, queen e8. Oh, that was just another variation. Okay. This did. This is what happened. Queen e8. Okay. Yeah, I was like, what? The computer is just giving a line with takes. Um, d takes e5. It's giving this line. I would have taken back, probably, but I'm toast. Yeah. It was a stupid blunder. And again, pawn takes pawn. This was the variation. It's terrible for black. Yeah, we both were just clowns. Missing the simple tactic. And now a5. Why is that a, why is that a blunder by me? a4, cd6, cd6, de5, ab3. And then you, you blundered your queen and resigned. So in the final position, I expect you to take back, I would take back, and these pawns offset each other. But in the meantime, we were just both hanging a central pawn, I mean, you know, we just both missed you winning a central pawn for two turns. Yeah, that's ridiculous. That is ridiculous. I mean, I'm distracted playing a lot of games, but it's, it's inexcusable to blunder this pawn on e5. I should have played queen e8 immediately. Yeah, so straight out of the gate. What about, like, instead of knight f4 if I go queen e8? I'm getting off the line, like, straight away. This is probably best, what I should have done. And that avoids all your tactics. And now, I can slowly prepare this plan. I mean, you could do, like, you know, this is also a threat, but you could also do g3. The thing is, like here, I might actually take that pawn on e4 with the white squares around your king all weak. Yeah, queen e8 is, is a really good move. Queen c2, a5, and black is fine. Alright, there were some silly blunders there. Hey, it's Miro is next. Thanks to Goiju for the submission of 1000 bits and... We got his game and the other game from Plancorn. So we got two two games on top of these. Let's quickly get through Miro with black e4 e5 king's gambit. Played the the Falk beer. All right, sides, take care. I um I think like clearly pawn takes pawn. Um I don't know what Hey it's Miro's playing here. Um there's transposition transposition back to the main line. There's E four and I've been experimenting with this. I had a fun game in the simul with that, where I messed up um in a funny way. It was like pawn takes, knight takes, knight c3. How was it now? Bishop c5. I can't remember. We'll save that for another time though. All right, knight f3 instead. This is um. Yeah, it's it's actually like the engine claiming that this is White's best move or something. I mean, if that's white's best move, then then black is happy playing the, the fuck beer. Then the fuck beer is absolutely good. Um, but this line is pretty straightforward. I would play pawn takes e4, knight takes e5, and knight d7. 
Maybe I've played too much, um, I've been playing too much Petrov and Elephant Gambit, but I like this. You just take, take on e4, and then they play this, and you just take it. Just take everything. And it looks like black has a good game. Bishop d3, knight e5, check this out, f takes e5, it's like a, I had this before, check, g3, and it's like playing an acerbate. It looks like one of Astrobate's Vienna Gambits. This is Solancy Brushkern, played here. Emil, a good friend of mine. Um, Solancy was white, and he drew with a weaker player in this game in, in 2010. He's got nothing. You know, Emil hates draws, too. He probably played on, but, but it's nothing for white. So that line kind of takes the fun out of it. Um, the engine is also suggesting knight h6 here. That is a cool idea. I'll have to try that out myself. Knight h6. Wow. In in the Lee Chess Opening Explorer, there are there are 58 cases of knight h6 being played. All right. Um, Ubatis today said that he he filters his his Lee Chess database. For only players above 1600 but my theory is that there's enough cheaters you know at all rating levels that you might get some good games where those under 1600 players were using an engine to play their game we don't want to weed those out because the engine you know the engines are are creating a lot of good opening novelties so that's why i don't i don't filter the under 1800s out of my my lee chess opening explorer you never know when you might find someone cheating with an engine. All right, but anyways, back to the game. E takes f4, we're transposing to a king's gambit declined. E takes d5, and now I am out of my book knowledge in this line. C6, another form of counter gambit. D4. Yeah, I'm... I know that Thomas Strangson would probably, he would probably hang on to his pawn on f4, um, like a dog. I, I like, kind of understand that. Apparently this is a move though, which is surprising. Bishop takes f4. Wow. I mean, it is kind of surprising, right? Like, bishop takes f4. But black is down no material, you know. I'm not sure that, you know, everybody knows this is a king's gambit. It looks like a queen's gambit declined. Except there's no pawns here, here, and here, and here. It's kind of funny. It's like a, queen, a king's gambit, queen's gambit decline where you just, like, took, took four pawns off the board or something. Randomly. Well, it's actually not a queen's gambit, but... It will be when white plays c4. Pretty funny. Um, all right, bishop d6. So c4, I would be afraid of. It's not a thing here. Too slow. Apparently. Well, I think it's playable. C4 is a try. You never want to block your c pawn, necessarily. The main move seems to be knight c3, but I say we don't block the c-pawn. Okay, the engine agrees, but it's a move. This guy actually did play c4. Holy shit, I was just suggesting that move randomly. What is that elegant drink you're drinking? Marco. Marco's back. Um, what's up? Um, yeah, c4. I'm not surprised. I mean, I think a lot of people think, oh, I'm just hanging on to my pawn. But I'm not playing the move so much to hang on to the pawn. You know, I'm playing c4 so that when I play knight c3, I have more control of the center in general. It's not about trying to take the pawn and hang on to it. See, what happened here? c4, cd5, and now white played c5. Very interesting. Yeah, that's a tough one. With white, I personally feel like this is more more fluid. 
But c5 is tempting, a positional approach. You guys think there's any chance there's games in the in the Lee Chess database? Fourteen hundred and thirty seven from this position. Unbelievable. Probably some transpositions, you know, move order transpositions. It seems like we got some kind of serious move order transposition going on. So, all right, here it's important moment, hey, it's Miro. Because in a lot of lines you want to go here. Like this Karo Khan style thing. Also in the French. If you play knight e7, you might use knight g6. You might play bishop f5, you don't block your f pawn. Whereas the way you played it, you actually have knight h5. So, they're very different, you know, styles of play for black here. Did he miss anything? No. Normally I don't like bishop g4 in, in the double king pawn openings. But I mean, since he can't kick you back to like h5, I'm also worried about this. I mean, do we have issues with like queen b3? He has queen issues. Um, it feels to me like it's a more balanced, I like to call it like balancing your development between the king side and the queen side. But then again, if you play knight c6, white might have h3. And now we have we have this style style stuff. I don't know. You know, queen b3 is an interesting move. It's no good. Bishop takes f3. This is sharp. This is just theoretical theoretical variation. Wow. I mean, that would be very crazy, right? Queen takes b7. I have no idea what's going on. Or, rook takes f3. Knight c6. This is unclear. But you could play g5 and just go with the, the kingside armada. Man, I, I, I don't know. I mean, it's very complicated. So queen b3 is a move. Instead, we played queen e1. I don't really think I'm in love with that move. He wants to play queen h4. Yeah, I guess it's fine. But don't you just have knight c6 now? And you're threatening bishop takes f3. This is where you got the idea to do the crazy knight g5. Maybe you just played your opponent in this game, in that Nimzovich against me. <laughs> White goes berserk now. Every berserking player's favorite move, knight g5. Yeah, I mean, this is ridiculous. He played knight g5. If I'm playing knight g5, I'm not playing knight g5 so I can play knight h3. That was after that. I mean, clearly we, we anticipated this, but then bishop takes f3. Dude, what's happening here? After queen h4. If bishop f3, rook f3, knight takes d4, rook h3, not g3, but rook h3. It, it looks a little crazy for, for white. Like, I mean, pretty one-dimensional threat here. A bishop takes h7 check. I guess h h6, bishop takes f4. Bishop takes f4. Queen takes f4. I mean, white is down a pawn.
but he does have some threats. Like knight e6, queen g3, threatening rook takes h6, knight g5, rook h4. You know, I don't know. It's really messy, but it looks like it should be okay for black. So he does that. That's kind of nutty. He did knight g5, wasting time, it feels like. And then here. So you played rook e8, but I'm not sure. You have a lot of choices in this position. Even f3. f3 looks kind of awkward for white, doesn't it? Mule Skinner? Doesn't this look a little awkward? Negative three. So you decided to play rook e8. He has queen h4, though. And then you played f3. But it's not as effective now. The whole point was that his knight was unprotected. Now his knight is actually protected. So I'm not sure what you really achieved there. Now, like, he's all pointed at your king's side. So the other f3 was, like, far stronger. You kind of randomly, like, went into this. I mean, you know, we've got to ask the obvious question. Does white have bishop takes h6? And how strong is it, you know? Because he could just, like, step his king aside and go full, like... Um... Henry Joseph Blackburn on you. Doesn't work because of rookie five. Obviously, you know, Hades Mirror would have seen this. Jesus. That's Black's only winning move in this position. Rookie five, of course. You know what? I bet you would have found it. You always find, like, these weird tactical moves. Then you would have blundered again after that and lost the game anyway. But if he if he had played this, you definitely would have found rookie five. You played it on the next move. Oh my god. But he never should have had this this serious of a chance, man. Wow. In fact, he has to sack it right away because if he plays king h one, this is even stronger. That is a really amazing move. No, it's even stronger. Wait, that's the sack right away. To have any chance. And you just transpose to that line. That's amazing. Wow. Nice move, bro. That just kills him. It just stops his attack in his tracks. Here you have rook g5. Doesn't do anything. I would be down with com like completing my development now. Unfortunately... Um, I can see g5 coming in. g5, queen d7. I want to play queen d7. Completing my development with, like, rook e8. Getting another piece in. And if he goes, like, rook g1, we play g5. And I say this is over. Like, white is just completely lost here. Too many threats. Because all the black's pieces are really well placed. There's some scary threats here. Plus 3.5. I mean, the point is to get down in there with a queen. Get the rook across. Um, and obviously g5. So what happened? You played knight e4. That, um, that opens up this possibility, but it doesn't develop your pieces. You got acerbate disease. You know? Acerbate gets ahead of himself. He's impatient, and he doesn't develop his pieces. Botfinnick would say, okay, you have to complete your development before you, like, you know, begin the, the final assault. So we still have a queen and a rook we need to bring into the game. Knight e4 is kind of spastic. Bishop e4. Why bishop e4? Was he afraid of something? Like, knight f5? Why does he want to give up his bishop, of all things? I would prefer to give up my knight and keep the bishop. 
Astrobates disease is when you like between move five and ten usually you just start moving the same piece twice for no particular reason. Yeah, I mean, giving up that white square bishop is suicide. I mean, you've got queen d5 now. Okay, queen d5, queen d2, it's a problem. You probably... Although your queen is protected, you'd have to take precautionary measures with, like, king h8 or something. Stochastic! Nice job. Stochastic chess just... It's like scholastic. It's stochastic. Queen h5, queen g2, king h8. Sidestepping knight f6 fork. But instead you play knight e2. Queen g2, queen h4. Which is like, huh? I don't understand what just happened here. With five minutes left. How does that work, Master? Oh, there is that blunder you talked about. I don't understand. Okay. I, I kind of get it, right? You, you're you're going to just, like, take here, play rook e8, but then knight f6 check. Is, is uncomfortable. Yeah. I don't think this works. I think you just, like, freaked out. But I think you're winning in this position, right? You have a better pawn structure. You gotta think about your chess position holistically. Like, it's a living thing. And, um... And I, I said I want to create, like, a chess... Chess position health meter. If you just stop and you, and you, like, take stock in what you have, you say to yourself, okay, A... I have a better pawn structure. B, I have better development. C, my king is safer than my opponent, you know? D, I don't know. The white squares are better for me. E, my bishop is better than his bishop. So you have all these different advantages, and you're like, oh, I don't have to rush here. I'll just patiently turn the screw, you know, in this position. Queen d5, queen g2. And I guess king h8. Now he has time to to actually develop with bishop e3. But objectively, you know, you retain like a clear advantage. Maybe queen d5 is not the move though. But I think you missed the boat there earlier. A little bit. You're lucky too. Like, why didn't he take with a knight? I don't understand. If he had taken with a knight, pawn takes, bishop takes. He keeps this bishop to guard that long diagonal. This looks like it might actually be okay for white. Like, I don't see a knockout blow for you. You're better, but there's no knockout blow. Alright, anyway, guys, I gotta finish up the last games. Knight e2 here. White just believed him and played bishop e3. And you were like, okay. I gave you one chance to win. Now I'm not going to give you any more. Now we have to sack the exchange. And I don't know if we're winning, but we're we're not losing. Threatening bishop takes h2. But ob objectively it's a draw. I don't know why I said it. It's objectively a draw. Actually, if you play bishop h2, he has queen h5. And probably he can hold with two rooks against the queen or something. Um, I don't think he's better, though. Unless he can just take on f3. He can just take on f3. 
take on f3, bishop takes h2. Yeah, I mean, maybe... Maybe he does this. Like, queen takes h5. Queen h5, rook takes. But you're not. No, you're, you're, you're much better here. He can't do that. And he can't do that. He can't let you play bishop takes h2. So hold on a second here. So if you play... Oh, this is not a threat. He thought he had a threat. That's not a threat. You still have an interesting game. Is it possible to be analyzed? Um... Just very quickly. We really don't have more time. Uh, but since since we... You just subscribed. Um, I'll try to... If you, if you send it, I'll try to do it quickly. But just five minutes. I gotta do two more games uh, before this. Normally we submit the games earlier. So you actually went on to win with the king walk. Okay. Send me the game. I gotta do Everyone Sucks But Me and Goiju. Uh, Bu. Alright. That's number nine. Goiju is number 10. Alright. I only have... I'm pretty pretty late, so... We'll try to do a very brief analysis of, of the last game. If you send it over. So, everyone says about me... Oh, you're playing Out of Stone, our Tuesday tournament. Yeah, he plays this well. Oh my god. I've got my database turned on. Okay, that's weird. This is only one game by me. Um, Bishop g2, castles, knight f3, d6. Okay. So I always castle here. It's the cl classic variation for this line. But who's to say it's white's only move? I... I think queen c2 is, um, yeah, that's cool. You can submit a game and we can go over the game, you know, properly next week. Alistair is a good player. He's, he beat me last time in this Dutch. I mean, I think the refutation of the Dutch is like playing e4. If you play e4 against the Dutch, you've, you've kind of like fundamentally refuted it. That's an oversimplification, um, but it's a very serious threat to black's position. If he doesn't have counterplay against an e4 push, he's in trouble. Queen c2 is definitely a move. Castles is the main line. Um, but this is interesting. You know, who's to say there's anything wrong with b3? It's like a quiet move. And absolutely, absolutely solid for white. I'm not sure. I, I think that maybe black could play a5. Although probably that move is not particularly necessary. Um, what else? What else can Black play here? I mean, classical moves. Queen g6. Excuse me. Queen e8 with the idea of queen g6, queen h5. That's. I mean, that's what I would think. Like an expert, like Simon Williams would play. In this Ilian Janetsky variation or Ilian Janetsky variation. Sometimes they play, they play a5. Okay, but Alistair just goes with his standard approach. Bishop b2. Now he trades. But I mean, black doesn't necessarily want to trade unless you're threatening something. You know, are you threatening something? I'm not sure if you're threatening anything here. Are you threatening to take on e4? Someone played b6. I don't trust that. Ban for east. It looks... I don't know. It looks a little dodgy. But you haven't castled yet. I keep forgetting you haven't castled yet. You know? Um, I still wouldn't play b6. This looks like a sensible move. Playing in Queen's Indian style. Alright. 
He takes, takes, bishop f6, castles, knight c6, and then now you played rook e1, threatening to play e4. Whenever we play white in this line, we have to watch, you know, what will, what will happen down the line, potentially with the f2. So I'm always, like, very careful about doing this. You know, I'd rather play queen c2, rook a1, and do e4, but it's maybe too slow. That's the question. I had a terrible game against Alistair where I lost against him last week in this variation. Different, different line, but... I let black get in e5, and I did, like, d5, and he had a good kind of kingside attack. I'm just trying to think what other options we have here. He's going to play e5, like, no matter what move we play in this position. It, it, it literally, like, doesn't matter. So... Someone played b4, which seems stupid, because you played b3 before. Um, Matthias Rode there. I know him. But this is a good player. He figured he had no other plan, so he ended up playing b4 in two moves. What about, like, queen c2, e5, takes? Takes, and, like, I was thinking maybe this... Queen b2, e4. Yeah, you gotta play the rook first. Here, queen e8, maybe queen e7, I don't know. Queen b2, e4, for example. Bishop takes f6, queen f6, blah blah blah. White is slightly better. So in this game, black played queen e8. White did play queen b2. Putting pressure on the center. And then white just played a5, or black just played a5. Um, this is... I don't know if that's a grandmaster. Goran Todorovic? Like an old grandmaster? a5? So this looks like a solid alternative. Okay, you played rook e1, e5. And um, now what are we going to do? Take, take take no take okay e4 makes sense the queens are in in capture here but it's it's fine nobody has to blink pawn takes pawn if pawn takes pawn the big the big million dollar question is like do you take it or do you try to regroup and take it with your knight this actually looks looks okay for you. So black plays f4, and then a very interesting move. This is sometimes played in the King's Indian too, which is like a brother opening of the Dutch. Sister opening, if you prefer. Queen d5 check, king h8. Damn, dude, does that work? Knight takes e5, through the pawn, White has nuclear radiation defending said pawn. Black obviously missed this. Wow. That that seriously works. It doesn't work? Why? Oh my god, he had queen e8? That is so sick. That's a brilliant idea, you know, for you to, to pick off that pawn. Damn. What if you just take on f4? I did something like this against him. This is probably what the engine will say, right? You should have just, like, taken on f4. You have a very strong presence in the center. Look at the presence in the center for white here. Just take on f4, and, and he's, like, worse. What's he going to do? Wow. That's crazy. And you're pinned on the diagonal. Ugh. So now you have to take on f4. That's the only move. 
Okay, it's not a total tragedy. You're probably still winning. But I'm not sure about this queen retreat. Queen, queen there looks passive. Why don't you go to, like, E3? I think you're just winning. When you play this move, you're leaving this square kind of weak. I mean, I guess it's not simple, but this looks very good. Queen C2 was, was slightly passive, although I, I don't know what he's supposed to do. I thought maybe this, honestly. I guess he, yeah, he has this, right? He could have played knight d4 and then, like, protected it with the pawn. No, this is a reasonable defense for him. He missed this. This is important. Seriously, after knight d4, queen b2, c5? I mean, okay, you can move your knight again, but where? Where do you move it? Knight f3? It's not so simple. So this was his only chance, I think, objectively. This this is a mistake to let your pawns unravel like that. I remember seeing this game now, okay. I think he made a mistake there. We're gonna have to be careful, but you have f4. Jesus. You have f4 here? Is that just like lights out? I think that's just game over. Black just doesn't have an answer to that move. There's no answer to f4. No, it's a killer. If you give him a moment to, to, to blockade you... Yeah, see? He was all over it. Yeah, it was winning. Wow. Now he's got some chance. Yeah, I mean, maybe you can get the pawn back. I'm not real optimistic about this. <clears throat> no, objectively, like, computer is probably still saying white's better. No. Wow. Queenie try was engine move. Wow. Oh, no, no, F3 was best. F3 was best, but he, yeah, he's still, he's better. He's clearly better. Wow, rook d2. Queen h5, he found the only winning move. And now e6, bishop f3. That's getting a little bit worrisome. But I'm still not convinced. So rook g1. And now rook g4. Jesus. Can you play bishop takes f3? For some reason. Rook takes, king takes. Queen takes f3. It's still not... It's still not... It's not over. Wow, you're winning here. Where did he go wrong? Wow, he missed bishop g3. Yeah, I mean, not surprising. This is a very hard, hard, hard attack to... The king's Indian expert. Hikaru would play this probably perfectly... But he's playing the Dutch, not the King's Indian. Bishop g3. That's sick, man. He missed it, too. Wow. So you're actually winning at that point. And, you, you, you know, you're both low on time. So e7 is unnecessary. That pawn is, is money in the bank. We don't want to give it away. You gave it away. After giving that away, like, you know... Things are not, not that clear anymore. The pawn is, is too, it's too heavy. You want to keep it on the board. He was short of time. Yeah, that was a really good chance. 
Um, okay, Goichu. Goichu is game nine, game ten. But I didn't add the Goichu game? I thought I did. It's weird. I added his game. Wait, I already did Goichu's game? No. Why didn't I add it? I thought I added it. It's weird. I don't know why it didn't go in there in the first time. Alright guys, last games. Oh goody, I have a message from Bob. Oh no. Whew, that was a close one. <laughs> I thought we had another text message from Bob on, on Twitch. He's always complaining when I like ban him. Alright. Goju is black. No comment. I mean, the Brooklyn Aliakin is not great, but it's playable, I guess. So interestingly, like, mostly people play D D6 here. We're playing it like, uh... Like a French defense, Karo Khan. Yeah, so... I guess White's... Allowing you to pin him with bishop g4. But if I were white, if I were acerbate, what would I play here? Right? Acerbate, what would you play in this position? What do you, what do you, what do you play in this position? Answer the question. What's your move in this position with white? That's not Acerbate's move. I think... H4? No. C4. I say we, we like go for it. We we go to we take it to black here. That's his favorite move in the advance, you know, and I think it's it's totally totally viable. Yeah. I mean, first of all, you have queen's ga queen's pawn themes with the pawn on b7 is not protected, right? Secondly, you're, you're attacking the center with c takes d and opening the game in a position where black is playing knight g8, you know? I'm not sure that black's best move is bishop g4, to be honest. You can play the Karo Khan. And then I still like c4. This happened in the Christus de Pasquale game. Okay. Australia. Alright guys, here's the game. Bishop g4 and then the wimpy and, and you know, normal. Bishop e2. e6. Castles. This guy, Krukulu, was playing like really fast. So c5. And now, chicken players play c3, but that's, like, passive, you know? Um, someone played d takes c, and someone actually played c4. So this move has guts. Better late than never, you know? And I say we, we carve up those white squares like a turkey. Right, right. If black gives up his light square bishop, exactly. So... Wrong. And this is not how you should play the position. It's it's boring and passive. We just transpose to a Karo Khan. What the bleep? That's crazy. Yeah. You transpose to a Karo Khan by playing knight f6, knight g8 in the Aliakin's defense. That's crazy. 
No, this is straight up exact transposition. Short Karpov, 1992. Original short variation. 93. Interesting. It's a new idea. It's all the rage. No, so you're supposed to play, like, bishop e3. But it's lame. You know, I think kind of lame variation for white. How bad is knight knight a3? This is an interesting question. I mean, it's normal in the in the advanced... Um, it's normally in the advanced variation. Of the French. I don't really want to give up my dark square bishop for a knight on a3. Yeah, but remember, I mean, white might... This happened to a teammate of mine. White might do, like, knight takes d4, Gina. You're not guaranteed he's going to take with a pawn. So, I mean, you could get something like this. You know, you want to, like, trade here? Like, okay. Black is solid, but I, I'm not of the opinion that I necessarily want to do this. I'm not, I'm not so keen on that. Um... So I'm not sure that black should release the tension in this position. I'm really anti-releasing the tension in general. However, I don't know, you know, how many options. Oh, you like this? Like, you want to chop the bishop and take here? Yeah, maybe that. That's good. I mean, that's very solid for black. But, I mean, still, he has a white square bishop. It's probably okay for white. No, it's it's equal. I don't know. But that's probably the safest thing to do. You play queen b6. So I think on queen b6, white has takes on c5, right? This is where our queen could end up kind of funky. White goes fully like... White turns into David Bronstein and starts taking on c5 on your on your ass. The, this I'm, I'm getting concerned about now. Maybe we can take with the queen. Then it's like tempo city. Bishop here... D takes C5 looks like a good move for white. Because if bishop takes, you got B4. And if queen takes, your queen is misplaced. And white will have tempos on the queen again. So I think this is inaccurate. I mean, maybe Gina's move, or whoever said bishop... But Gina actually said pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn. But I think bishop takes knight. What about this? What am I missing? Pawn takes pawn, knight takes. Computer doesn't like it, but I, th I still think it's fine. Queen takes e2. I don't know. Alright guys, anyway, I gotta go. So we're gonna finish this up. But it looks like queen b6 is, is like slightly inaccurate. Yeah, white. Wow, white has c4 as well. So take care with your development in the Karo Khan. Well, this isn't a Karo Khan. But luckily, white was playing passively. Thank you for playing passively. Don't don't forget, good you. You can play knight h6. I think a player, you know, a player um, willing to play the the black side of the. If we're willing to play the black side of the. Um, the Brooklyn variation, we can play the three a.m. defense. I mean, I, I don't mind this. This is good for black in a lot of cases. I think that still, like, this might be the best try. But now you can, like, do this. Yeah, I guess still b4 is annoying. But at least we can put our bishop here. Here. Queen c7. It's playable. So, let's see. Knight e7. Now this is seriously an issue. White just doesn't understand. He's supposed to do d takes c. Your queen is going to be very discombobulated on c5. Though maybe it's not not that dangerous now with his knight on c2. Yeah, white's just like... He's just playing like really, really like mindless passive moves. 
but I'm afraid now you, you kind of have to like do something about this this thing you can't really keep this tension for this long maybe knight f5 this is kind of weird I, I, I like this even more now I, yeah even queen c7 yeah even queen c7 yeah I agree um even knight g6 or some weird move like that is possible. You're keeping the tension here too long. And I think, um... At this point, probably you should take on f3. The problem is after bishop h5, you have, like, too many pieces, like, conflicting for the f5, g6 squares. And you get forked when you put your knight on f5. Yeah, I mean, you just... I don't like the way you played it. And now c4 is weird. The problem is that Goichi is playing the, the Brooklyn variation of the al and not the Karo Khan. He doesn't play the Karo Khan. Okay, bishop g6. I thought maybe b3 is good for white here. Yeah, and this is, this is okay for you. White's suddenly going off on the other side. But I think you ought to consider playing h6. Kicking him back, first of all. Get him out of there. I don't like his knight on g5. And he just, like, blundered material. You could have just won the exchange. But, I mean, you know, he has some compensation. But not really enough. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if you could sack here on d4. He's, like, lost. You just knock him out immediately with knight d4. Oh, rook f3. Then his knight has no squares. That's hilarious. <laughs> now his knight has no squares. h6, knight h7. Unbelievable. I think you're still winning. Instead of h6, you could also play this. There's a lot of interesting stuff going on here. All right, guys. So, this was kind of weird. Oh, you won the exchange this way as well. Okay. He has f5. He has one last chance maybe for f5. Yes. He missed it. No, he this is this guy was the guy who was playing super fast, right? F5, you gave him a chance. And now you just like... Wait, what? Well, you're not winning the exchange. You're not winning anything. So that was sad. Oh, you won his knight. You are winning something. Now he's got F5 now. Yeah, that was poor, poorly calculated. You have to take first, and then play h6, and then he's got like knight h7, or the sack on e6, which is probably not enough. But, you know, you've got to be very, very careful here. I mean, I played enough Karo uh, uh, Khan's advanced variations to know how dangerous this type of roller is. Um, you should have been winning. But he actually used his time in this game. Now it's not so clear. I think you're screwed up now. That was a huge mistake. Here, here, and then just bishop d3. And you win. It took me a while to find it. I should have seen it before. I'm kind of tired. It's been a long day. Thursday's my long day. Here we're clearly winning a piece with with h6. Yeah, that was that was badly calculated. So after f5, we start to cave in. He didn't like this, but I still think he has tremendous tremendous It feels like he should have tremendous chances. I don't know. 
I guess he's still losing, but like the engine says, knight takes f7, I'm not surprised. It's not that simple, you know. Here, it feels very dangerous for you. And then e6. That's pretty scary. Objectively, you're probably still winning. F6. You should have played F6. I mean, whatever, man. You know, this this can't, this can't, you can't be allowed to keep this line open. So you played bishop there. It looks like this is really, really solid. And you could have played bishop takes a seven. <clears throat> I'm not even sure about the final position. Obviously, you could play bishop f7. But what about even the final position here? Check. He resigned. He goes f6. Are you sure about that? Oh, your rook's hanging. Oh. Yeah. So bishop takes f7. f6. He's not clearly winning here. Wow, it's like rook e3, rook c7, rook e1. You're a piece up, you castle. Oh, you can castle. It's like chess line 60. King f8. The move was king f8. In this position? My computer thinks castles is even stronger. This is a pretty fast processor on this machine. I don't know, it's depth 24, but it's possible the king f8 is even stronger, leaving the rook file open. Um, this machine is much faster than my other one. After f7 check? Oh, you mean just king f8. Oh god. You just hide behind the human shield. I missed it. Now I'm too tired. I'm toasted, guys. It was an interesting game. A lot to learn from that. All right, guys. Thanks for joining me. I'm going to raid uh, our friend, Grandmaster Vita Levante, who's streaming. So stay tuned and, and join his stream, please. If you'd like to watch some more quality chess, um, we're going to do a raid here. Slash raid. Thanks, everybody. We'll be back tomorrow with some... We'll be back tomorrow with some... Rapid challenges. GM. Tranquilizer. Slash raid. GM underscore. And I can never spell tranquilizer his way. I keep trying to spell it like the literal way. All right. Invalid username. I did it again. Jesus Christ. He's gone offline. He just came online. He just came online, dude. Tranquilizer. What's the problem? Tranquilizer. What's my problem? Trank. Oh, maybe he went offline? Really? No, it said I misspelled it. Trank. Maybe I just left out a letter or something. I can't see. That's wrong. Trank will. I. Will. Will Ozer. I don't know what I did wrong. I did the wrong. Did something wrong. GM tranquilizer. What is going on with me? I can't use my own keyboard. Maybe I did dash tranquilizer? Well that's what I did. It was it was just the dash underscore. 
My problem is the underscore I couldn't find. It's the freaking Hungarian keyboard. I don't know where the dash is. I have to call in the army. What am I going to do? Can't find it. Can somebody write in raid slash gm underscore tranquilizer and I'll copy and paste it because my Hungarian keyboard, I can't find the underscore. This is really embarrassing. Um, I need a key map or something. I can't find the underscore. Where the hell is it? Why, why do you make it an account with underscore? Jesus Christ. Thanks, man. Yeah, I can't find my underscore. We're going to need help. I need your help. What happened? Slash raid. What happened? You actually tried to ra raid him. That's funny, Mr. Coffee raided him. Oh my god, I'm screwing up everything. <sighs> Slash raid. This is the most difficult raid I've ever done. <sighs> it's almost ready. This better work. You cannot cheer in your own channel. All right, it's finally created. Thank you guys for staying with us while we raid GM Tranquilizer. He's raided me quite a few times recently. Um, he's a great guy and knows everything about chess, so check him out. Good night. Nice cat, dude. Um, all right, dude. <laughs> it's funny. 